You know, Sherry, you could have introduced me like, oh, this a great is great Bill Kennison or something wonderful. instead of just standing there going. <laughs> This is the most powerful man I know, Mr. Bill Kennison. Thank you, Sherry. You don't know many men, do you? <laughs> <laughs> and welcome to the Gospel According to Kennison. And I am your man, your illustrious host, Bill Kennison, with my beautiful assistant that I've been married to for 49? 49 years. 49 years. Good morning, Mary Zastro. Mary! Yes. I, I communicate with her on uh, face, Facebook, and I'm glad to see her there. I love I love Mary. I loved her for the first time she showed up at our theater. She is great. She's a special person, very special person. The Maros, Don and Morin and Cheryl, good morning to you. Okay, that's Don and Cheryl Morin. Uh-huh. Well, the way you said it, I didn't know what you said. Morns. No. Morn and Don and Cheryl. I'm like, okay. The Morins. Maybe maybe they added to the family. I didn't know. Joe Sumter. Joe Sumter. Danny James. And Good I morning. want to tell Joe Sumter, no, I am not giving out Cadillacs. We'll explain that in a little, in just a, you know, a second or two. Danny and James. Danny James, still praying for Danny. You know, he, his wife transitioned just a... a few weeks ago and uh, I always think the toughest time when when you lose someone I hate to say lose you're not losing them but when they transform to the uh, to the next level is the time afterwards you think that that going away that you give them in a, a service of which they did fantastic you think that's it no no it's not the more difficult time, so you have to just keep in your mind. And Sherry, you you wrote a or you posted a fantastic thing. The author was unknown called the train, and I think next week I'll I'll read that. It, it's just it's just perfect, not only for those that that pass on, but it's perfect for life and for success. I'm gonna read that next week. Good morning. Mr. Kaufman, Indiana, are you cold this yeah, Mr. morning? Mr. Kaufman is really Mrs. Kaufman, Autumn. Okay. And she got some beautiful kids, by the way. Diana Lee, Scott. Diana Lee. And Scott Ross is watching. Well, you, you don't like to just. Diana Lee watches all the time, and she makes anyone such I've been, great anyone comments. Anyone I was engaged to, you just go boom. No, they just keep popping She's up. She's a fantastic woman. Yes. She's a fantastic woman, a fantastic family. I love them. Jerry Nicholson, good morning. Jerry and his wife. They watch every Sunday. Pray for their daughter, Kayla. She had a rough week. When they almost lost her Tuesday night. Whoa, okay. Well, we sure will. I didn't, I didn't realize that. But we will remember Kayla in prayer. I like that name, Kayla. We, well, she, I guess she's not a little girl anymore, is she? Came to our theater, Kayla. No. No, and she's, now she's grown up. Yeah, yeah. It happens. It happens. And Sandra scares it. Good morning to Boston. And Sandra has a an unspoken request that uh, we're going to be remembering in prayer, and I expect complete victory. Complete victory yes. in that situation. And Jack Friedman. Jack, well, what can I say? Please like the Gospel According to Kennison. He puts the the uh, site up there, and I guess it moves us up in the uh, if you're seek or if you're looking for the program or whatever. It does something. It moves us up in the ranks, and uh, it's very important. And Jack every week reminds me, and I, half the time I forget. But please. Uh, like the gospel according to Kennison. Good morning, Michael Kate. It's been a long time. You know what? He sent me a picture. I I I, I may have got it last night, but but uh, I saw it this morning of him and his dad. Oh. And uh, he was his dad's date at his. Uh, I think it's his birthday party, or I think his birthday party where where Ron. I uh, had worked, and I imagine he's retired. And uh, Sherry, 
He was a man's man. I seen him do physical things I never thought one man could do. And I love him. Sandy, Sandra was one of our uh, secretaries at our church in, in Rockford, more of an assistant than she was a secretary. And I love the whole family, Mike. When I wasn't pulling him off of somebody in a fight, uh, just a fantastic, just just a, a great man. I, I love Mike. He served for our country. And uh, I won't tell you what he did, but he, he served in our armed forces, was at the front lines. And uh, I'll respect him the rest of my life for that. Danny James this morning, he says he's got Pam Spiros and Dina White with him. Well, all right. All right. It's growing. Yes. We're growing every week. Every week. All right, are we ready? We're ready. Go ahead. Misty Soper, good morning. Gina yeah, Gwen. Misty. I don't think I can do this program without Misty. Anyway, uh, we mentioned one, one uh, unspoken request. And another is from your cousin Paulette. That, again, is uh, unspoken. But... I'm going to take one unspoken request and I'm going to make it public because we don't talk about many times, we don't have the time, we're only here 30 minutes, we can't stand here and tell you of all the people that get a healing, uh, get a financial blessing and everything through this program, your prayers work. It's not me, it's, it's you, your prayers work. A few weeks ago, Paulette had an unspoken request and it was for, for her son-in-law. Am I all right saying this, Sherry? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, he was diagnosed uh, with cancer. And um, they, uh, I think they did a biopsy or whatever, and then they did a blood test after he'd been diagnosed. And we had been praying, and you people had been praying. And uh, came back, he has no cancer. No cancer at all. And it's not a mistake in their testing. It's God intervening. That God in him coming alive. And uh, we, get, we get those reports. Patrick Bagdon. This is a man probably isn't even supposed to be here right now. That not only is here. He, uh, you always help me with this. He had uh, hemo... Geoblastoma. Geoblastoma, which is a pretty much a fatal disease of the brain and uh but he prayed he changed not only did he pray he changed his entire lifestyle sherry he changed it to the point that uh he doesn't watch movies and i'm not talking about porn or anything he won't watch violent movies anymore totally changed his lifestyle and i don't know if i told you this sherry two weeks from today he's going to be baptized Great. In the Crossroads Christian Church in Joliet, I believe. And uh, completely, the doctors have given him a complete, clean bill of health. There is no disease. This happens frequently. It's in your power. I want to, uh, I want to start a program this morning. We started last week with the keys to truth and power. You have that. You have that. I posted this week on Facebook a little... Oh, by the way, I've got, before we get started, uh, many of you, <laughs> many of you, uh, I guess, got a friend invitation from me. You also uh, got an advertisement for gift cards. And as I read the many posts that were sent to me, I'm not giving out gift cards. I'm not giving out Cadillacs. Uh, Dr. J, Dr. McKinney, I am not giving out motorcycles. Uh, I was hacked, and we're trying to report it now and get it, get it cleaned up, but uh, it's actually been kind of humorous. Outside of annoying, it's really been kind of humorous. I think it's amazing that I... Uh, John Lutz's grandson, a week ago, a little over a week ago, I, I posted, uh, uh, he put a picture up and I posted, that's a good looking boy. And Facebook, as I told you, 
uh, took it down. Not only took that down, took the entire post down, and uh, and then warned me that if I uh, made a gender difference in the future, I would be suspended. Now they'll they'll go to all that trouble, Sherry, over me saying that's a good looking boy. That was my entire post or comment was that's a good looking boy. They'll go to all that trouble to even maybe suspend me, and yet, what about these hackers? Even when you report them, what about some of the things I see on Facebook that I wouldn't let my, my granddaughter look at? But I'm not going to get on that soapbox. I covered it last week. All right. I want to uh, why don't you start off with the scripture. For everyone, and we said this last week, for everyone who asks, receive. Everyone. That's what it says. Everyone who will ask will receive. And he who seeks, again, that's everyone that will seek, will find. And unto him... Well, I guess I better start changing that. I guess under them who knock, it shall be opened. Everyone. Everyone. I'm not giving you a, a stipulation to, for you to be qualified to ask and to seek and to knock. No, that's everyone. Every one of you listening to me, you, you, you Muslims, that's for you. Atheists, that's for you. Christians, that's for you. Jewish folks, that's for you. Islamic people, that's for you. It's everyone. That means that your search to know for yourself will not be in vain. Will not be in vain. Then there is we, we covered the spiritual part. Then there's the mental being of man. The mental side of you. Who too few have really ever associated with at all. Few people really think. I know these are big statements. I will explain. Few people really think. We just had a presidential election a little over, or actually not even a year ago. Most, I can't say most, but I can say for those that I ask, why are you voting for Joe Biden? Almost every one of them did not give me issues. What they said was, I don't like Trump. That's not thinking. Few people really think. We're going to have another election. There'll be another presidential election. And right now it looks like that Joe Biden would lose that election. And if you ask people, why are you voting for so and so? I don't like Biden. I don't like Biden. Think. Think. Few really think. You see, thinking involves a process of choosing and eliminating and approving. Choosing what's right, eliminating what's not right, and proving that to be. The mind must become the servant. We have allowed our, our minds and our emotions to be our masters. No. No, your mind must become the servant. You must learn to obey. It must accept and reject as it proves all things. This is 
required if one is to fully know the truth. The Bible said that if you would know the truth, the truth would make you be free. Not even a choice in it. He that knoweth the truth shall be free. Somebody said, well, in the, in the Bible it says, be made free. No, not in the original writing. Original writing it is, you will be free. You cannot be bound in sickness. You cannot be bound in your finances. You cannot be bound in your depression. There's nothing you can be bound in if you know the truth. The truth will make you be free. You are endowed. Let me tell you something. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, and then we got sidetracked when we first started. I put a little thing up to uh, this, this uh, week. I think it's on Wednesday I do it. And I, I put in that everyone who is born has one mission. They have one mission. That mission is to know themselves and to know the God within them. That's the only mission you have. It's the only journey you have in this life that's important. To know who you really are. Somebody said, I know who I am. No, you a lot of you don't. A lot of you don't. And it's man's capacity to know for yourself. Religion is great to know for us. It's great for them to tell us what is truth. Yet you're still sick. You're still bound. You're still poor. You're still down. It's, you're in your capacity to know yourself. And the full knowing can only be established as one proves and experiences and truth. That's the only, only place it can be established. When one finally enters the realm of knowing, I remember uh, I was teaching, I, I think it was in Rockford, Illinois, in our church there, on the difference in knowing and believing. And I used kind of a crude example, but I'm going to do it here. Because it really gets across the point of knowing and believing. I said, you got Brother and Sister Jones sitting here with their eight children. Brother Jones believes those are his children. Sister Jones knows they're her children. Do you see the difference? Sister Jones went through that entire process of having each one of those children. Brother Jones didn't. He just believes that that's his children. What do you want to do? Do you want to believe or do you want to know? If you know, no one can take that away from you. You see, when we enter this realm of knowing, your emotions will have been brought under control. And I'm an emotional person. But that will be brought under control. The powers of the mind will have developed to their full functioning and you will be prepared to be taught of God. First time I made this statement, I almost felt like I was blaspheming. This was years ago. I was pastoring in Peoria. And I remember I was in a convention. And in this convention, I was the evening speaker. That was the star. 
That was the the top. And I remember I made a statement that preachers got mad at me, which wasn't unusual, by the way. And I said, we should be teaching to put ourselves out of business. Well, that's the last thing pastors wanted to hear. Then I went on this and, and explained it, which I doubt any of, well, I can't say any of them, but I doubt most of them didn't listen to it. All they heard was, you need to put yourself out of business. What I was explaining to them is, we need to teach our people power. We need to teach our people knowledge. We need to teach our people how to receive from God what they desire. Then they won't need to run to us. They won't need to run to us and make us the answer to all of their problems. God wants you to be the answer. God in you, man. Like I said this week, that excites me. When I think of that, that excites me. And, you know, all of us have that, that little voice or whatever you want to call it in your mind. That's the God in you. That little voice that says, you can do it. You can do it. That's the God in you. That's the God I'm talking about. The realm of all-knowing goes beyond the mental realm. It is the realm where peace abides. As the good book says, that peace that passeth understanding, that no matter what comes your way, you have peace. There's only one way you can have that peace, and that is to know Everything's all right, no matter what it looks like. No, everything is all right. That's where peace abides. That realm where love goes beyond thought. Where you can't help but love. See, there are many of us who will never be satisfied with anything, I know I won't, short of the full truth. I remember I talking to Sherry this this week. We were talking and and uh, we were talking politics actually. And I said, you know, my father. I think he was a Republican. I don't really know, but I remember George Wallace came to Peoria, and then the very next day he went to Milwaukee and was shot. He was running for president. My father went down to this rally, which I thought was unusual because he ordinarily would never do that. He went down to this rally, and when he came home, I said, Dad, what'd you think? And he said, I liked it. And I go, you like George Wallace? He said, well, he said something. Somebody yelled out of the crowd. Oh, he, he had said if you'll let me, I will tell you the truth. And someone yelled out of the crowd, what is the truth? And then just like religion, just like politics, pretty much just like life, George, George Wallace responded with, whatever the people want to know. That has been what we considered our truth. Whatever the system wants us to know. You see, these are the promises that's given. Seek and ye shall find. I want you to remember that today. Or you can put seek diligently and you shall know me. Seek diligently. I used to wonder when the Bible you know, they talk about how much you had to pray and pray without ceasing. Now, that's impossible. I remember as a kid, I think, you can't do that. You can't just pray all the time. Pray without ceasing. As I'm older now, I understand it. And that is that communication 
Have that communication in everything you do. Talk to that voice in your head. Talk to that God in you. In everything you do, pray without ceasing. Now, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled with the fullness of God. Whoa. For those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled with the fullness of God. You know what righteousness, a very simple definition is? Right things. Very simple. So, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after right things. Well, I got a, I got a whole list of right things I like. The desires that I have. Somebody said, yeah, but how do you know God wants you to have that? Well, again, in the Bible it said he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, we've kind of made that backwards. We think that what it said was, whatever you desire, he's going to give that to you. No, no, that's not what it says. What it says is, he gave us the desires. He put the desires in us. Now it's up to us to go and get it. He put the desires in your heart. Now you have the ability, you have the tools, you have the capacity to do that. Another way to express it, another way is, they shall know the truth fully and completely. Is that a victory sign? See, Sherry's so excited. She's Now she's got both of them up. The inner realm of knowing is difficult to describe, and we're not going to get deep into it today, but it, it's far beyond emotions and even beyond thought. And the carnal existence that there seems to be no ter terms available with which to make it Known in the realm of the deep inner stillness. In the realm of that God in you. When I used to teach classes, questions would come up and arise, which I had never before heard or thought of. And many of them pertain to points to which no answers in either two had ever been recorded. I learned during those experiences that there is no question without an answer. None. None. So when you go to your preacher, you go to your pastor, and you ask him a question, and he goes, I remember when I was a child, that's, this is what they used to tell you most of the time, is, you know what? Sherry, when I get to heaven, that's the first thing I'm going to ask Jesus. That's not going to do me any good here. That's like them telling me I'm going to when I die, I'm going to live in a mansion. Well, how, how about give me a decent place to live now? When I die, I'm going to walk on streets of gold. How about putting some money in my pocket now? We've always been taught by others to accept less than what we want. See, the true answer will be given if one does not pretend or assume that he already knows everything. I'm getting out of the why I'm walking down memory lane today. My father told me something that I've remembered it my whole life. I remember I had just got out of uh, just got out of high school, getting ready to go into college. So I knew everything. I knew everything. I knew everything that he had done wrong, and I knew how to make it right. I even knew how he could run his church. I had a very wise father, a very loving and wise father. And he told me, he said, Bill, the, begot, the beginning of knowledge is the knowledge of ignorance. And with this high school education, I was in between high school and college, 
with this high school education, I couldn't quite grasp that. So he made it real simple for me. When you really realize that you don't know anything, then you're starting to know something. And I remember that the rest of my life. Then when I went to college and I got out of college, I remember one day I was looking at my dad and I was like, man, how did he get so smart? I thought when I got out of high school, he was, he was kind of slow. He didn't need you know. And then by the time I got out of college and facing the real world, I went, man, he does know something. I think I listened to him. You see, there's always a burning witness in the soul to the very truth if one is true in his desire to know truth. Heavenly Father, I thank you. Thank you for your presence that is within each one of us. I thank you for letting that light shine in us for us to know us. It will get rid of sickness. It'll get rid of poverty. It'll get rid of disappointment and depression. It will bring us peace. I ask this morning that I join with everyone that needs a touch from you. That the God in them become alive. Let them have healing today. Let them see it happen Today, let them have a miracle in their finances. Today, I'll give you all the praise. Amen. Sherry, do we have a, a holiday or anything coming up? Seems like Thanksgiving. No, 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 no. We have Veterans Day coming up on Thursday, and I definitely want to recognize all of our veterans and those that have served. Uh, I guess one of my not embarrassing that Sherry and I go out and and we live in San Antonio, which is a kind of a military town. And we'll go to pay for something, they'll go, Were you a veteran? And I jokingly say, No, that forty nine years of marriage ought to count for something. But Sherry, that that has always kind of bothered me. I was in college. I did carry 1A the entire time. And I thought if they they call me, I'm going. But they, they went to the lottery. Just as soon as I got out of high school, I was never called. And, uh, but my heart and my love and my respect go to our service people that have served. Many of them suffered loss. The families of those that gave their life for our freedom. My heart just goes out to them. God love every one of Michael Cates watching us today. He's one. Of Kimberly Moore. She's one. We've got many, many, many that watch us. And I want you to know because it's easy just to say the words. But I want you to know from Sharon I's heart. We can't, we can't be in a restaurant and, and see a serviceman there that, that we don't ask if we can pick up the ticket. Many times I don't even ask. We just do it. And I can never repay the price that you paid, even if you came home uninjured. You served to protect the liberties of this country. And God bless you. Sherry, I love them. You love them. God loves them. And God bless America. Yes. And any time you put on, your names go so fast. Um, if you put a prayer request on here, we do get it. We read everything and all week we'll be praying. And thank you, Misty. She said this is such a fantastic sermon. Thank you. Amen. Well, thank you, Mitzi. I love it. I love it. God bless you. We got to go.